Hello Internet. Today's project is the making of a Clayton Boyer designed clock. He calls it clock number six. Plans are available for this clock from him at his website and the site is provided in this video's description. Here we see the clock in operation after completion. Clayton's plan is provided in a DXF file, which I downloaded into Fusion 360 and created this 3D model of the clock project. The first piece which we'll build is the back plate, or back support, which I'm pulling out of the model here. Here the CNC router is cutting the back plate out of a one half inch thick piece of the Dauk wood. The pockets were cut earlier off camera and now we're doing a final contour to finish each of the pockets. I'm using a one eighth inch end mill for this operation. Now we're starting the final contour of the part. The next piece that we'll cut on camera is the pendulum bob, which will be identified here in the drawing. This part is also cut from one half inch thick Padauk hardwood. Padauk is an easy wood to work with. Its only downfall is the shop looks like somebody exploded a can of paprika in the shop after you're done with it. The void in the center of the bob will house the pendulum shaft. Padauk was used to make the inner piece of the bob. The outer pieces of the bob were made from one quarter inch thick solid birch. The Padauk centerpiece and the two birch outer pieces are glued together. Lead pellets are used to give some weight to the bob. The next piece that we'll make is the pendulum pivot at the top of the pendulum shown here. This part is also made from one half inch thick padauk. Here a quarter inch end mill cuts two through pockets. The 
point being formed in this pocket is the point from which the pendulum will swing. We now switch to a 1 8 inch end mill for final contours. Now we're making a small cosmetic part that will go on the pendulum. The tool here is a tapered 1 16th inch ball mill. A sharp chisel cuts the tabs. disc hides the connection between the pivot point and the pendulum shaft. We'll clean up the glue later off camera. And here is the completed pendulum. The last part that will show the CNC making is the escape wheel. This part is made from one quarter inch birch finish plywood. That's finish as in Finland. As before, the tool is a one eighth inch end mill. This jig, made from a Forstner bit, was used to make two dowels for the project with a hole in the center. This is a deceptively simple part, but I found very hard to execute. anyone knows a better way to put a hole in the center of a dowel, leave a comment. sandpaper with the dowel mounted on a rod. Next we'll make the clock dial from this piece of curly maple. Twelve identical segments were made on the CNC. was cut on the ends of each segment to receive a spline.
groove is offset toward the back of the dial to allow additional material for engraving the numbers. The splines were cut from a piece of padauk. and splines are 3 30 seconds of an inch. Hide glue was used to glue the splines and the maple segments together. The splines were flushed up with a sharp chisel and sandpaper. The CNC router was used to engrave a bullseye for centering the assembled dial. Here a V-bit is used to engrave the dial. And here all the parts of the clock are laid out on the workbench. The plastic cup has about six pounds of lead shot for the weight. The weight container is just a piece of two inch PVC plumbing pipe cut to about 11 inches. These pedalk discs will be on each end of the weight container. This gear is the winding gear for lifting the weight. A linseed oil finish from Tried and True plus Johnson paste wax was used to finish all the Padauk parts. All the plywood parts are left completely unfinished. And now assembly begins with the back plate and top and bottom. All the screw holes were carefully pre-drilled to prevent splitting.
This is the weight winding wheel and the fabric cable used to hold the weight. This part is called the pallet. It controls the stopping and starting of the escapement wheel based on the swinging of the pendulum. That was not supposed to happen. Let's see it again in slow motion. Here's the part under repair. while the epoxy sets will assemble the weight. Now back to final assembly. Designer Clayton Boyer recommends testing the free movement of the gears by blowing on the escapement wheel. Black acrylic paint has been added to the dial numbers by my talented wife. This part being installed is called the crutch and transfers energy from the escapement wheel through the pallet to the pendulum. The clock is now leveled on a test stand clamped to the bench. I found the adjustment of the crutch in relationship to the pallet is pretty fussy. And now here is the completed clock in operation. I'll show the making of a proper stand for the clock in a future video.
Thanks for watching.